Bacala is asking to leave Leon and Chelsea and PSG are on hot alert. Both teams are willing to pay the money. Let's break this story down. Roman Lukaku's loan to Roma? Well, it looks like it's foregone conclusion. Roma need to pay up a specific fee and I'll tell you what that is. They're not willing to do it. Negotiations are happening as we speak right now. And furthermore, the last thing that you lot need to know. The one and only Callum hudson Adoy. What went wrong and why we can't be so hypercritical when the club move on youth products. Because Callum hudson Adoy one day was a £70 million player, according to Bayern Munich. Today, he's joining Nottingham Forest for £8 million. Let's break this down. Let's get into the little details. Let's go, Bratuchi. Welcome to the Kafka's View. You know what it is. Let's Welcome, guys. Let's get the little admin out of the way, because obviously, we have to do that. So, number one, I need you lot to hit the like button. Guys, when you lot hit the like button, it really supports the channel. It's the bare minimum you can do to support me. Number two, if you're new, subscribe. You made it this far. It is a quick way of giving me an indication whether I'm doing a good job on this channel and whether we're growing in the right direction. And finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to have two videos up. Number one will be something about like a video that you got could always watch our plan as a Chelsea football club of where we're trying to get to, broken down into nice little categories. And yesterday's match review. I, it was good, it was in detail, I was very positive, but I also came out with some constructive criticism that I think a lot of you would enjoy. That will be at the very end. Make sure you stay tuned to click. We're going to start with Romelu Lukaku. Romelu Lukaku's time at Chelsea has been beyond preposterous, whether it's the first saga or whether it's the second one. There was so much hope and optimism that he's going to be the long-term solution, but on both occasions, the individual has even let himself down or ran away from a challenge. Whilst missing a penalty in the Super Cup, he basically refused to stay and fight for his position, demanded a loan. Some would argue that it was the right decision for him financially, but his career at Chelsea went downhill straight after that. He went to Everton, smashed it and moved there on a permanent basis. Came back, was absolutely believing he should be the alpha dog. It never worked out. Things happened. Now Romelu Lukaku is set to be going to Roma. He rejected Juventus after Juventus were interested in him. He destroyed all the bridges that in Milan with Inter. He absolutely broke him into pieces and now this is what's happening with Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho wants the player on a loan. The player wants to join. However, this is where now we're starting to see problems and the problems are very interesting. Chelsea wanted an obligation and the obligation to buy after the loan is integral for Chelsea. They basically want to wipe their hands of him. They say we don't want nothing to do with him. Romelu Lukaku's tenure at Chelsea needs to be over. However, Romelu Lukaku's tenure at Chelsea can't be over because Roma can't afford to buy him on a permanent basis. But what Roma want to offer is a very interesting deal. They said, listen, Todd, have, have a drink. They sat down, they're having a beautiful lasagna, very nice lasagna, extra parmesan over the top, obviously. They're talking about it, they bought some tiramisu for dinner and said, look, what are we going to do with Rom? Give him on loan to us. We'll convince him to take a pay cut. Romelu Lukaku at the moment earns around about £350,000 a week. Romelu took a, a pay cut to join Inter Milan because he wanted to play there. Now he's going to take a pay cut to join Roma. He has agreed to this. The wages are going to be in and around 7 to 8 million euros a year. Roma are happy with that. But Roma want to pay 5 million euros in a loan. Chelsea said they want 8 to 10 million pounds. And why do they want that fee? This is my opinion now. I think this has got a lot to do with what happened with Joao Felix. Atletico forced Chelsea to pay a crazy fee for Joao Felix. So Chelsea are saying, hold on, if we paid a crazy fee, you're paying a crazy fee and we need to make some money back. For me, this is very smart. We spent £90 million pounds on Romelu Lukaku. £90 million pounds sterling. So if we can get an extra £10 million back right now and the £5 million we got last year, it means that Romelu Lukaku somehow is paying back some of the transfer value and then when we sell him, all together accumulated, it looks like a decent fee. For me, my hope is Romelu goes there, smashes it to the point where he, like Roma are competing for a title. Roma somehow break the bank and go and acquire him. Or Juventus or Inter or Milan. You know, you know he's got no problem going anywhere, right? You literally know Romelu Lukaku has no allegiances to any football club. He represents himself. So for me, it's very simple. At, as of this moment, Fabrizio and Demarzio are saying the loan has been agreed. It's just the final part 
the loan fee. So the idea of the loan, check. The, trans, uh, the wages Romelu will be on, check. Romelu's desire to go there, check. The only thing left right now is that final fee. It, I, so it's literally a five million euro. I think they're going to meet in the middle. I think it'll be somewhere in the seven to eight million euros region. Romo are gonna get an outstanding player. Mourinho is going to get the striker he always loves because he doesn't believe in Tammy, doesn't believe in Balotti, and now he's going to get himself the absolute monster in Romelu Lukaku that has a point to prove. And this is going to be good for him. With Awar, with Renato Sanchez, he's going to have a very good team, and this is great news for Chelsea as well. Chelsea at this moment in time are pushing for Bacola from Lyon. We know that, but we know that the player's preference is to go to PSG, purely based on the fact that the club has been chasing him for a foreseeable future, and more importantly, Importantly, the guy's French. Guys, he's a young 18 year old, 19 year old, making it through the rank. Through his lifetime, PSG have been a massive club. Being French, it plays a big factor to go to Paris, enjoy himself, be around Kylian Mbappe, be around Dembele, be a lot around most probably Kulomwani when he joins. It's a, it has the law. It might not have the allure for us, purely based on the fact that we come from the UK, or we come from Spain, or we come from Nigeria, and we don't feel like, oh my god, the French league is phenomenal. For a French man, that league is great, right? Or for a French woman, to play in Ligue 1, which is probably the French version, it, it's going to be an allure of it. So we can't judge him on that. But the latest news from RMC, and you know that publication at this moment in time is very reputable, especially when my boy Fabrice Hawkins is reporting it, and the reports are that Bacola has said, sell me now. He, I want to leave immediately. He is basically putting his foot down to Leon and saying, you have to sell me. Chelsea are very interested. PSG are very interested. Talks are ongoing. It's going to be very easy to agree personal terms with him. But the reason I'm so confident Chelsea really want him because he fits the profile that Pochettino spoke about. The profile that Pochettino spoke about was he wants somebody that can play in the nine potentially, but can contribute in and around the area. I think that was a mistranslation, purely based on the fact that I think he meant he wants either winger or a number 10. And for me, Bacola fits that beautifully. He's very agile, he's direct, he's got a good trickery on him, he's got a good shot, he can go either right or left. I don't know about the 10 role, is he going to be the most smoothest in that position? But Kola could come and could fit at Chelsea very quickly. A lot of Chelsea fans at this moment want Ryan Shirky. I really like Ryan Shirky, but I'm, I have my reservations for one reason and one reason only. If we get Ryan Shirky, where does Ryan Shirky play if we're playing this stupid formation that we've been playing? Because you just signed Romeo Lavia, you've got Moises Caicedo, you've got Enzo Fernandez, you've got Ogo Chocwa, who's not going anywhere evidently, and you've got Conor Gallagher. So unless you get rid of Conor Gallagher and bring Ryan Shirky, and even then, then Enzo has to drop deeper. And I don't see that happening. I think Enzo's going to be our new number 10. So I would prefer for us to go and get a, maybe a Bacola, I would prefer us not to do any bit. Bacala is another young player, and I don't want another young player. I want an experienced head. I want an individual who's gonna come in and contribute as of now. Mohamed Kudos was my favorite. I wanted Kudos to come in, but it looks like it's not going to happen. It looks like he will go to West Ham because none of the big clubs came in. The interest just was not there. His, play his camp believed that there was more of a desire for his talents. So guys, it is what it is, sadly, we are most probably either gonna go for a young player or nothing. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Stay tuned, Windows got five more days in. And the final bit of news is on Mr. Callum Hudson-Odoi. And what I'm going to tell you guys, is I really like Callum Hudson-Odoi. I think Callum Hudson-Odoi has got a lot of potential in him or had a lot of potential in him. Technically, very gifted player, great vision, good passing range, likes to play the game as if he's one of the best players on the pitch. In the way that he eloquently receives the ball in the right areas, demands the ball, he thinks he is the best player on the pitch every time he's on it. But he doesn't have that explosiveness anymore. That Achilles really ruined him. And that was the differentiator because it enabled him to have more time and space, it enabled him to get into better positions and just destroy wingers. However, now it looks like he's set to be joining uh, Nottingham Forest for eight million pounds after his deal to Forest has broken down. And this is where I want to talk to you guys about being really reactionary 
when we sell Youngs. A lot of people said, you know what, we sold Lewis Hall, I can't believe we did that. Sometimes you, you just have to keep these young talents. He's gotta be amazing, Alec. Guys, I would have said the same thing about Callum hudson Odoi. I sounded exactly like that. I swear to you, I've sat on this platform. If you guys go back and say, give him game, give him game time. If you give Callum an opportunity, he'll take it. And I was wrong because Callum went on, on a loan to Bayer Leverkusen, didn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, you don't have anyone to blame but yourself because he had the opportunities and Alonso came in, gave him the opportunity and the intensity just was not there from Callum. So whilst we had a 70 million pound bid in from him once from Bayern Munich, the fact that he's going for 8 million really, really puts it in perspective to me how much of a decrease. It's really shame how this situation worked out because we had a tremendous talent on our hands. But this was the Gaff guys you guys. I hope you lot enjoyed it. Like I said, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and more importantly, there's two videos right here, right? Go and watch the video about our plan, why we're signing youngsters and trying to develop them, to flip them. And then all at the same time, if you want to watch yesterday's review, the review is right there. I hope you lot enjoy it. Hit the like button. Peace out. I'm out.